Good morning. Can you say good morning? Morning. <laughs> so we just got ourselves all ready and we're going to go to the uh, park and ride again because that was so much easier than anything else and cheap. Um, so yeah, £3.20 return just for me. That one goes free. Fantastic. Bob along into the city centre and then catch another bus, the sightseeing bus, where we'll get information and a tour of the city, which will be really, really good. Hopefully we'll get some nice lunch out, but if not, I have packed provisions just in case. Always prepared as a mother. <laughs> you end up looking like a pack horse going on a massive hike every time you go anywhere, but uh, at least we're prepared and we've got everything. We've got our drinks, we've got some crisps, Tuna pots and an apple for that one when he gets the munchies. And we'll see what today brings. Yeah, looking forward to this one. Ideas and then took them down south to Birmingham where he created Bourneville in much the same fashion as New Year's week. Now, uh, if you gaze ahead of us and out the right hand side of the bus, uh, that church you can see is All Saints Pavement. Very unique because if you look up, it's got this very strange bell tower up the top of it with the single bell as we go past. Come back at night, it's lit up like a Christmas tree. That is a lantern tower. You see it just come around? So you, if you got lost in that in the middle of the night, you're in serious trouble. It was one of the largest forests in the UK. The way they sold this was to put a fire in the top of that bell tower to act like the lighthouse on land. You can always find your way back to the city just by looking up. Now, directly ahead of us, the road leads down to the river, uh, where there is a pub called the King's Arms. Now, the river, notoriously in York, floods every single year. And the King's Arms has been kind enough to make a note of how high the water has come in the pub by drawing a line on the wall. Fun fact, it's never stopped people from going for a pint. I have seen them go out in boats before. Uh, now, on the right hand side here, you have the York Dungeons. And then coming up on the right just here, this rather impressive red brick building, is the York Magistrates Court, which is very nice to look at from the outside, not so nice from the inside. Uh, and around this corner on the left hand side here, we have the Clifford Stout. You get off it, I'll leave that. Yeah. Uh, there were originally two towers built by William the Conqueror in this area. One here and one across the river at Bell Hill. They have a fully reconstructed Victorian street in the basement on it. They also have the toy museum on the top story, uh, which if you want to go into, feel free, but I saw the Game Boy Color I got for my 11th birthday in there as a museum piece, and that made me feel old. Uh, anyways, also on the left, these barred windows, because this is the law courts of York today, and you can actually see a line in the stone there, just on the left, where it goes back to the original medieval castle. You can see a little better there. And then down, if you look, the, those stone foundations that truck's parked next to, those are the original drawbridge coming down over the river that we're crossing now. And also, if you look out the left hand side of the bus, you will see a weather spoons, which you can go inside later if you want to be really depressed. Uh, but it's actually the name that's important on the side of it there the Poston Gate, because it's named after this tower coming from the right hand side of the bus just over here. That is the Poston Gate of the city, or the back gate into the city. If you want us to do a sneaky entrance, that'd be your way in. Now the travel lodge out the left of us actually reused the Roman foundations, Roman stone, in its foundations, making it the most culturally significant travel lodge in the country. Um, technically it's a relic. Now, also on the left here, uh, this area you can see was the workhouse, oh, sorry, not the workhouse, Dick Street, the workshop Dick Street for the York Docks. So all of the warehouses that would have taken in uh, food and deliveries for the industry of York are on the left over here, including deliveries for Terry's Chocolate Factory that used to come in once a week by steamboat uh, because there was just phenomenal quantities of sugar and cocoa that he needed to run his factory. Later on in uh, life, this would change to being the railways shipping stuff through. Now, also on the left-hand side just here, this building with the red door you can see is the Banana Warehouse, as was. Uh, it used to house the greatest collection of junk in the city of York. <laughs> Nearly every single pantomime done at the York Theatre Royal for the last 30 years nicked its props out of there. They used to have a suit of armour. I never got enough money to buy it. Shame. Now, uh, at the left-hand side just over here, you go through the gap between these two buildings, 
you'll see the Merchant Adventurous Hall, uh, which was originally founded as part of a charitable uh, giving foundation. Um, the Merchant Adventurous Guild was originally founded after the tail end of the Black Death Head. It's a bit of a niche request, but it's there for you if you want it. And we're turning onto Warm Gate just here, uh, which was the Irish district of the city. Uh, tail end of the potato famine, a lot of people were trying to get out of Ireland, and they came to York specifically because they knew that families like Terry's and Roundtree's looked after the poor of the city and would look after them. A uh, little bit more on that in a second. First, coming up on the right-hand side, that purple sign you can see is for the Church of St. Dennis. Uh, would you like to see just a second? Coming up now. Uh, St. Dennis is the patron saint of Paris and France. I don't know what you're thinking, why the hell is there a church to the patron saint of Paris in the middle of York? That's because that's originally a Norman church, so French. Uh, and uh, those of you who were on a little earlier in the tour would have seen the King's Fish Pond, where William the Conqueror downed the wrong bit of the River Foss and flooded a huge portion of the city. This used to be twice as big, because when he did that, half of the church got submerged and the foundations collapsed. Then, in the Siege of York in 1644, it used to have a lovely spire on top of that, but it got hit by a cannonball coming over the city walls. <laughs> um, they rebuilt it, and then 40 years later it got struck by a bolt of lightning, which burned the whole thing down again. And what I'm saying is that church has got like, the worst luck ever. Uh, it's also the only church in York which is dedicated to a cephalophore. If you've never heard the term before, that's any saint who carries their own severed head. The story goes that St. Dennis was caught by the Romans before they converted to Christianity and was beheaded in the center of Paris, or the Roman city thereof. Uh, his, severed, well, his body got up, picked up his own severed head, and proceeded to walk, stumbling through the city streets of Paris while singing a bunch of psalms. I would have given good money to be there for that, but sadly I couldn't. The Morel building was a lodging house. Uh, for the Irish immigrants to the city. If you didn't have any money and you came here, you'd pay just a tiny amount and they'd look after you in there for the night. If you had even less money than that, you couldn't afford it, they'd still look after you. What they did was called the Penny Lily Column started fighting each other. Uh, they then lost the Battle of Culloden and 16 Scottish pipers were taken from that battle and as an example to the rest of Scotland, were tried at the York Law Courts, uh, at the York Law Courts for treachery or um, being traded in. When people were living on that, they had permission from the city council to keep that as a pig pen. So, I mean, if that broke, pigs would fly. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But anyways, I uh, guess, back to the game itself. So, one of the major things you will notice, walking around York, and this just this isn't just the gate, this is true. So for the love of God, don't try it. I'm protecting you. At home. Um, but yeah, there's tons and tons of stuff in that past. Now, um, the actual city walls you can see, on the right hand side of the bus are mostly Victorian reconstruction and again this goes back to what I was saying about things are a little too neat the way you can always tell with the walls themselves look up at the sort of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the fortifications up there and you can kind of see that they've cut a little bit too deep and a little too wide for it to be an effective defense like you don't want to get shot in the face when you're up there so if you're drawing a longbow, you need just enough room to make that draw and then fire and just enough depth to get the longbow out and over. Now you'll notice this does actually change about halfway down the wall here because uh, what you've got there is a development from the 1600s. Uh, they started to use rifles, guns, muskets technically. Um, and a gun needs a hell of a lot less space to fire properly than a longbow does. You can poke it out the centre. Ah, now we're just coming on to my favourite district of the city, this, because every one of these buildings in the 1800s was a pub. Hi. So if you went out the left hand side you'd find yourself in the cattle market district, all the cattle market workers used to come here and drink. The Edinburgh Arms, which we just passed, uh, was, is actually facing the opposite direction to all the other pubs, for a reason we'll get onto in a second. First, bingo, at the front of the bus. Uh, that mecha bingo, that we're just passing on the left hand side here, was originally the Rialto Cinema. Uh, where a young gentleman called John Barry learned to play the piano. He'd later go on to compose the first ten James Bond theme tunes. So the guy came up with Devon and learned that started in there. Uh, Ed Rams. Now, out on the left of us from here, you'd find yourself in the Glassworks district. Um, most of the people who worked the cattle markets, they were English. Most of the people who worked the glass markets, or the glass workshops, 
I'm Scottish. I, I'm really sorry. Um, and then you've got the River Foss, which is named after the Roman word fossa, meaning ditch. Not terribly poetic people, the Romans. Um, but not to worry, because we're about to cross the River Ouse, which is named after the Celtic word for water, so it's the River Water. Not inventive, <laughs> either of the Celts actually. Um, now, on either side of this, as we do go, this area was uh, at St George's Fields, which was the second execution ground of York. On the left, that area was the ducking stool used in the witch burning trials of the 1700s. Very fair and equitable way of telling whether or not a young lady's a witch that. You duck her under the river, and if she drowns, she's innocent. <laughs> yeah, that works. Now, um, and up the right hand side of the bus just over here, the hill you can see is Bale Hill. You remember I said William the Conqueror put up two towers? That was the site of the second one. Uh, and he swore the Archbishop of York to defend that with his own private army. That is still in effect today because we never delete a law. It makes sense in medieval times. Your Archbishop, on average, would have been 30 to 40 years old, probably would have had a history in the military, and would know how to fight. Today, until recently, that means little John Sentamu, who's about five foot six, walks with a cane, and is 76 years old, was legally required to come out and defend that with a mace should we ever be attacked by rambling crazy people. <laughs> now, um, just a thing to mention up here, uh, can you cover his ears for a second? Actually, any kids, it's recommended here covering for this. And this one we're travelling up is Nunnery Lane. Not the original name of the street, that was Bagger Lane, which was a Victorian euphemism for a lady of negotiable virtue. Um, the reason for the name change is actually the gate coming up on the right hand side just over here. This is Victoria Bar, just on the right there, uh, which Queen Victoria herself was supposed to come to the dedication ceremony of. Touch it with a sword, bless the gate, all the whole shebang. Until she discovered the name of the street she was going to be operating on. <laughs> to put it bluntly, she was not amused. Um, she didn't show up and they actually changed the name of the street afterwards. And there's two theories as to where they get the name from, Nunnery Lane. The first is that a nunnery uh, in medieval slang is actually a term for a house of ill repute. Uh, if you want the proof, go and look at Hamlet. Uh, that bit where he turns around to a female and says, get me to a nunnery, that's what he's talking about. Not a nice man, Hamlet. Um, the other running theory is that there is a convent at the top of this street on the left-hand side, but it's a convent in hiding. Of all nobles to the crown who were traitors were hung, it's also the only gate of the city that a member of the royal family can enter through. Uh, you have to ask permission from the Lord Mayor. Uh, on the right, you'll notice that building poking up. That was the site of the original Victorian railway station in York. Uh, one of two of the only monarchs to never go through that ceremony wound up there in the 1800s. Nice. On the left hand side, this is the rebuild they made, but you can actually see on the right, there's two arches going through of the original tracks of the railway going in. And the monarch who didn't have to ask permission was Queen Victoria. She'd already entered the city walls by train. And it would have been a little bit awkward to turn around to the Empress of India and say, excuse me, Mom, would you mind just popping out to come back in? She probably, again, would not have been amused. Um, now, the building on the left here, the station, was actually designed by the same people who designed St Pancras Station down in London. As you can tell if you walk through it, it's got that sort of wrought iron cathedral look on the inside. And at the left again, the York Tap uh, is the original tea rooms uh, for the York Station uh, in Victorian times. A bit of a tactic for making a bit of extra money out of their customers uh, back in Victorian times. Um, it, just a quick show of hands, did anybody here come by Tress? Standing at the front of the bus now, that statue is George Lehman. Very popular politician, good friend of the Royal Trees family, uh, and the man who created the first underground sewers in York. Now there is, there is a bit of a legend about this statue. As we get past, I want you to look just at his neckline, just beneath the car, and see if you can see a line in the stone. You'll get another chance to go out. I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. First though, as we round this corner here, on either side of you, you'll see the Memorial Gardens. So the gardens, as we round the corner, is on the left. The memorial is on the right, just over here. That's a memorial to the First World War. Uh, there are names on that memorial that were present at the Christmas truce in 1914. Uh, if you're not familiar with the story, uh, Christmas Eve, 1914. Ramparts? 
just off to the right there, looks a bit like a church. That's the York Guild Hall. Now, the Guild Hall was home to, obviously, the guilds of York. Those were the butchers, the bakers, the candlestick makers, all the master craftsmen in the city, and they were very competitive with each other. Oh, oh it was a wasp. Get it! Uh, yes, very competitive with each other. So every year they used to do a tradition called the York Mystery Plays. Quite a simple idea, you take a play from the Bible, a story from the Bible, stick it on the back of a wagon, wheel it around the city, and if you like the actors, you can throw tomatoes at them. If you didn't like the actors, you used to throw something else. Now, uh, looking out the front of the bus, you'll see there's the shape of a heart in it. That's called the Heart of York. The legend has it, if you stand beneath that with someone you care very deeply about and share a kiss, you'll be together forever. I can tell you from personal experience, it doesn't work. It's thank you. Thank you for laughing as well. Uh, yeah, we're just coming up to Exhibition Square. The building on the left is King's Manor, named after Henry VIII, who came here with his wife, Catherine Howard. She loved the place so much, she came back. Not with Henry, Thomas Culpepper. They spent two weeks there, and within a year, both her head and Thomas Culpepper's head got neatly removed from their bodies. The city of York, uh, the original gate on this site was put there by the Romans, so there's been a gate here for 1871, uh, about 1952 years. Yeah, 1950, maybe. Oh, I'm not great at maths. Uh, but yes, very old gate. Now, what we're travelling up here, this is Gilligate. It's named after St. Giles Church, which is at the other end from us here. I'll point it out when we get to it. Before we do, if you gaze out the right-hand side of the bus, just past the pharmacy here, you've got the Cactus Trading Post coming up. And I just want you to look after the lantern on the side of the building here. There's a tiny little statue of a cat, yeah? That's a Thomas Adams cat. Uh, he was an architect locally and was absolutely obsessed with cats. The story goes he went out one night, got a bunch of cats, put them in plaster of Paris, and then stuck them on buildings all throughout the city. He, did, he didn't actually do that, he just put up statues of them. There are 27 in total though, so you can find them if you want. Uh, now also as we're coming down here on the right hand side of the bus, you can sort of see two windows that have been covered over on the red brick building there. Don't worry, there's a few more examples of it as we come down. That's from window tax. Uh, in the Victorian age, they used to tax you based on how many windows were on your property. So if you bricked up your windows, you didn't have to pay the tax. Yeah, yeah. Much cheaper than the account in the Cayman Islands, if you ask me. Um, but yes, this was which is the best university of York, thank you very much. Um, but they do lay claim to a really interesting tradition in here. This was made in the 1800s on the left hand side of the bus, and originally as a priest training college. So every person who graduates from there gets to do so looking out the right hand side of the bus in the Minster. You can see just poking its head over the walls just over there. Um, now because it was a priest training college, they also get to study in the York Minster Library. The army probably weren't too happy about the situation either. However, if you did get desperate enough that you needed to fish that place and you didn't have the permission of the king, you were committing the sin of poachery. So, if they caught you, they'd take a hat. This is the reason we've stopped off here. The official gravestone of Dick Turpin, the dandy highwayman. Having dinner with your nanny and granddad. Yeah. Very nice. You see that smoke? I don't
that's not the campsite that's the equestrian center I hope everything's okay. I'm going to assume it is. <laughs> yes, we really did enjoy <laughs> today our uh, uh, open top tour bus worked brilliantly um you'll have to forgive me i may have had a bit too much wine <laughs> i wanted to use up the box so that i don't have to bring it home again um I'm checking that sick. uh disconcerting yeah um where was I? <laughs> yeah, I've had a lovely evening, can you tell? Um, I, I invited mum and dad over because they keep doing the barbecues at theirs and then they're lumbered with all of the washing up. So I thought, <clears throat> oh, I'll make we'll wave some jacket potatoes. So that's what we did. We had jacket potatoes, cheese and beans and salad and it was really nice. Um, you know, a jacket potato in an oven takes forever um which is all very well and good at home but i'm not wasting my gas on a jacket potato on a campsite i'm just not cooking for that long on my gas so a microwave does the job brilliantly um and they really were nice yes so uh cheese beans jacket potato spuds and a nice salad was a perfect way to end our last night um yeah sucks a bit as our last night but I'm, I'm kind of ready we've had a glorious holiday we really have both in Scarborough and York it's been superb um, and, and today has been amazing to see Dick Turpin's grave I didn't expect that when we came to York I didn't so that was great uh, and, and the story behind that, that he was actually buried there twice because the first time he was buried, he was dug up pretty quickly um, and then propped up in a bar or rigor mortis site. And the people used to pay a penny or shilling or whatever the currency was then to, to sit with the, the, the famous highwayman and have a pint in the, in the bar before they got caught and then he was uh, put back in his grave so pretty macabre but pretty funny at the same time I didn't know he wasn't actually called Richard Turpin John Palmer was his name so we learn something new every day and I love that that's why I love exploring brilliant absolutely brilliant so we've had a marvellous day out today uh, the the tour bus was great um very useful we did we did the entire trip it's about an hour long around the city um we did the full circumference once and then we decided to get off at various spots so we got off to, to visit dick turpin and then we got off to find somewhere to eat lunch and then so it was a, it's a really useful way to get around the city and there are two tour bus operators. We called them one red, one red blue, um, because the buses are red or blue. The blue was cheaper, and that's the one that we went with. The the red was slightly more expensive, but definitely more regular. We saw as we were waiting at bus stops for our particular bus, there would be like two red ones come along before our blue one would come along so if you're looking for speed red's the way to go if you're looking for budget blue's the way to go but i suspect they both have the same information and do pretty much the same thing um so yeah i was happy with blue um but red it definitely is faster could you stop wait 
really. Uh, yeah. I'm doing this slightly earlier this evening. My son's still at the park. It's our last night. And I want him to make full use of the, the park while he's enjoying it. And then have a little bit of a, a later night. I'm already tired. I've <laughs> just done the washing up. Finishing off the last of the wine. Uh, before I call him back in. And... Uh, then sit down for the evening and, and chill out for a bit before we pack away tomorrow. But yeah, our next holiday we have booked is next month at some point in Chipping Norton. And that's to on the corner of Diddley Squat Farm, which is the entire reason we're going. Um, it seems like a lovely uh, caravan site, quite a well known site even before Clarkson's farm came on the telly, but that just tipped it over the edge for us. Quite fancy that. Yeah. We're going to say good night now. Thank you for watching our entire holiday. If you haven't watched it all, then well, scroll back through the loads. We're here for 10 nights in Yorkshire. And it was our first visit to Yorkshire and it's been a blinder. We have absolutely loved both Scarborough and York and highly recommend it. This particular campsite as a campsite is amazing. Uh, Scarborough as an area, amazing. Um, so yeah, we're pretty, pretty chuffed to have had this holiday. It's, it's been amazing, funny enough. Yeah, great. I would recommend it to anybody. So thank you for watching. Love you lots. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.